stay tuned for the second half of the show with Sunshine Jones. Hi, welcome back to Club Closed.
falling in line means cutting your hair after all these years. Falling in line means abandoning your dreams, who you really are, because it's time to face reality, right? Falling in line, it means giving up on who you really are, way down inside, for the benefit of people that you don't know, people you'll never know, slipping into a beige uniform and a handsome paper hat to say hello. May I take your order, please, for money that hardly seems worth it? Falling in line means rethinking the feelings that have driven your life thus far. You know, maybe that's a really good idea. Maybe you should do that. <laughs> I don't know. But falling in line means you're stepping on to the conveyor belt of the man. Stick it to the man. All power to the people. Never fall in line. Don't never fall in line. Don't ever fall in line. Don't ever fall in line. Don't never fall in line. Never fall in line. You know, and if you've fallen in line, if you've fallen in line already and you're sitting on your couch at home watching this thinking, fuck that guy. What the fuck is Sunshine talking about? What the hell, man? Don't tell me how to live my life and I'm not trying to tell you how to live your life. I'm just trying to remind you that way down inside there is a voice. And in that voice there is an inspiration. And in that inspiration there is a vibration. And in that vibration there is a universe. And at the end of the universe there is truth and love and hope and unity. And this is no time for division. This is no time for separation and hatred and contempt and exception and hubris and all your smug, rancid bullshit. This is the moment for love, unity, togetherness, hope, and fucking the power of positivity. So don't never fall in line. Don't never fall in line. Don't ever fall in line. Don't ever fall in line. You know what you're supposed to do instead? Fall in love. Fall in love. Fall in love. Fall in love. Fall in love.
That was such an exciting show. And here joining me is Sunshine Jones. Hi. Hi. Yeah. That was such a fun show. That was so fun. So cool. So tell us about your equipment. You've got a lot of analog stuff going on up there. Tell us about your show. You want to talk about gear? Yes. <laughs> um, well, I uh, practice what I call the play live philosophy of live electronic music. And so what that means is that I don't use a computer and I don't use any kind of a core sequence. So what's happening is I'm clocking from a central source and I'm connecting to a whole bunch of instruments, some of which I built myself. And um, I'm composing and arranging in real time. So it's like I'm actually playing. That's so incredible. <laughs> so cool. So how did you get into all of this? Tell us about the early days. The early days, like the early, early days. I mean, I know this is what, maybe like three decades or more that you've been doing this? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. So, so what was it, how did you get into this? Well, it all started in the early 70s. I would listen to KDIA. It was just the R&B radio station here, the AM radio station. It was super fun. And so I would, was, wasn't allowed to listen to music after dark, so I would put the little earphone in my ear and hide the little Panasonic radio under my pillow and just listen to like a... Like Low Down by Boz Skaggs and Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder. It was awesome. Yeah. And so that's how it started. I would jump up and down on the bed with a hairbrush pretending to be the singer for the band. I love that. I used to do that. Yeah, right? Who? I, if you didn't do that, do it right now. Um, so I think that um, that's kind of where that got into me, this idea that um, I had that in me. And um, I tried to be in bands for years, and it was never any good. Like, nobody ever liked any band I was ever in. <laughs> not ever, not one. And um, <clears throat> it wasn't until my friend Damien like, came home one night with an MMT-8 sequencer. He was like, check this out. And we were like, it doesn't make any sound. And like, we figured out how to use it. And like, it just changed everything. And then we didn't need any musicians. <laughs> we can play by ourselves. And then I started making music that people liked. And you've got to go where the love is. You can't um, just you know, stay in your garage for the rest of your life. You've got to get out in the world. Absolutely. And uh, so do you miss those early days? Are you happy with where things are in the music industry right now? Like, That's a hilarious question. <laughs> um, I, um, you know, yes and no. I mean, I miss Marvin Gaye. I miss Sylvester. I miss a lot of things about the past. But I don't have a retroactive fascination. I don't think that I wish it was the 70s or the 80s or the 90s. I really love here and now. I think right now, like there's no time like right now. Right, in this very moment. Well, really, because I'm actually out of my apartment, which is really nice, and we don't have masks <laughs> on, which is also really nice. But I think that um, I think that we have sort of the, 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 the dirigible has risen from the platform, and we're well underway. And I think that electronic music has been totally vindicated as an actual bona fide art form. And I think that um, pretty much we're free now. And I think about like Solange and FK Twigs, like there's so much talent in this world where people have just sat down at their laptops and started to pick at stuff and then they got some drummers and some singers and they changed the world. And so what I'm trying to do is take a look at the idea that we had a previous vision of the future, which might have been a better idea. The idea that rather than the computer doing everything for us, say like how, um, maybe we're the computer operators, and so we're the soul of the machine. And so if we get involved in what those machines do and how they relate to one another, mm, we get to be a little more revolutionary, a little more positive, and a little more loving than if we're just sitting around staring at laptops and phones. I agree. I will say that I really loved a lot of the messages in your show tonight. Did you pick up on the messages? I did, and I think that a lot of it was very um, just... Uh you know, critical about what's going on today, just, and also the philosophies to just spread love mm -hmm. and, you know, for people to really kind of look at where we are in the world was uh, meaningful and, and touching. I Brittany, I feel so heard. Thank you. Oh, That's beautiful. It was great. I think that um, the message is to, I mean, I'm a provocateur. I mean, it's my job, I think, ultimately to be a bit of an antagonist. I can personify certain points of view and it's sort of pushing them, whether it's interpersonally, or if it's uh, cultural or political, the idea is to open the door. Right. Because once the doors are open, then we all start telling the truth. And when we all start telling the truth, as you see from what's been going on the last six months, that um, 
you kind of find out who your friends are and what people are really made of. And that's an interesting time for us to come together because how do you listen to people that are coming from a place that you really don't like, don't want to hear? Right. How can we live? We ought to live together. How are we going to do it? It's true. Love. I love the message. The message is love. <laughs> um, so, you know, speaking of the pandemic, how have you been faring during this time? Are you making lemonade out of this? Like, what are you doing? Are you crafting? Oh, uh, it's been a really long six months and I haven't enjoyed it. Uh, this is a wonderful experience. I'm so grateful to be here. I think that um, like a year ago, I started restoring um, vintage electronics. And so the last six months have been kind of crazy basement weirdo experiences. But what I've really enjoyed about the last six months has been just horrifying. Like I, I, I found a, a naked woman in an alley and I gave her my jacket and I walked her home. And she wanted to give me my jacket back. I'm like, no, honey, you keep it. And um, I found a, a man, looked like a man looming over a woman. And I intervened because I'm stupid and just intervened. And um, I said, do you guys realize what it looks like is going on? And they're like, oh, she turned out to be having a bipolar episode. And I rode in an ambulance with them to General Hospital. And they wouldn't admit them because of their pandemic emergencies. And so I screamed and yelled until somebody came down from the psych emergency and actually helped her. That's what the last six months have been like for me. It's been like intervention after intervention after weirdo after weirdo. And I just wanted to know how I could be useful because I'm not taking my mask off except for this. And um, I wanted, you know, I mean, a virus is a virus, right? You have to take care of yourself. Keep your hands clean. Keep them out of your nose. And um, I wanted to know how I could be helpful. And I was really blown away at the ways I've been able to be useful. Wow, that's really incredible. And did you go into that with that intention or just sort of <laughs> developed as you stumbled onto I these experiences? I think I'm just a particular kind of stupid that when there's a naked lady, I want to get her home safe. Right. And I don't care about my jacket. I care about her. I think that's kindness. Is that kindness? I think so. Thank you. That is really wonderful. So from a larger perspective, where do you see us going as a society from here? Big question. <laughs> I feel, I actually in my heart feel like only good things are going to come from what's been going on. I think that the propaganda that's being sold is divisive and it isn't true. I think that we are good people and this is a good place. I think we're terrified and we're probably a little selfish. But I really think that this period of time has been a good time for many people that I love and respect to really reflect inward and really pull back to what's important and get rid of what isn't. And I think that's really valuable. I'm not sure if I would have done that. I mean, I came into 2020 slinging. Like, I was teaching a class. It was a full cohort. We were going to put out a record. I had, like, five records, a new album, a tour of Europe. Like, everything was, it was going. And then one day, that just went, like, right. my heart got broken. My, my, I became single. Like, everything just was done. And it was like, seriously? And um, even my son, I have a son. He's beautiful. He uh, got into college. And he had to finish high school on a laptop. He had to start university on a laptop. But as is true with him, I've watched him get grounded and get back to what's really important. And it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. He doesn't think it's gorgeous. And so for me, I don't think it's gorgeous. But it's really, really important. And I'm not sure what would have encouraged us to do that. Right. So I, th I hope, I hope what we're going to do is carry that idea forward into whatever comes next, whether it's civil war or viral corrosion or, or, or just a subsiding of this drama and we get back to work. Yeah, I mean, I think we do have to kind of take a look at our shadow selves as individuals in a society and it really does take this kind of global pause in order to do that. Um, as a musician, how do you see, you know, getting back out there, what do you see is gonna take place for the industry? coming out of this? A lot of people have had to roll way back and take stock in all industries. And I think that with regards to music, it's really particularly challenging because like a big part of how I stay connected to the world and sane and grounded in my body is in my work. I travel all the time, I play all the time, and I go to great lengths to lug my equipment around and set it up and play. And that release of all that energy and all that passion and all that love and then all the hugs afterwards and all the dancing, it's a huge part of who I am. 
And so I can't wait to go forward and get back to that. I'm such a grassroots artist. I sort of don't necessarily gravitate towards the mainstream or anything that's sort of big or important. I'm much more interested in what's uh, substantial and significant, what's true. And that means the world to me. And a lot of people say that sort of thing, but I do that. That's all that I do. Once in a while, I make a concession and show up someplace fancy, but not usually. Okay. Oh, well, thank you so much for being here with us tonight. And I uh, can't wait to join you for the after party.